Hey there, adventurers. If you're like me, then you love the great outdoors. There's nothing I love doing outside more so than going backpacking. When I'm in the backcountry, sometimes solo, traveling for days or even weeks at a time, I've only got the things that I'm carrying on my back to use with me when I'm out there. So everything has been carefully chosen for its feature set, its reliability, and its ease of use. I know time is precious, so on certain items I'll be very brief, whereas other items where I've made critical decisions on why I use a certain item, I'll give you a little bit more detail. This won't be a video where I go into all the specs of every item. If you're interested in that information, I'll have a gear list down in the description and you can find all of that there. I'll also provide some information about my hiking profile, how many miles I hike per day, what kind of sites, campsites I use, and information like that so you can understand why I make some of these gear decisions a little bit better. All right, now let's get into the gear. Starting off with the backpack, this is a Z-Pax Arc Zip Ultra. I just got this. It's about three months old. I actually had the prior generation of this that I used for seven years and over 2,000 miles and hundreds of nights in a tent. Um, so got a lot of use out of it, was actually still going strong and I just wanted something that was new that I could use for another seven years. I encourage you to check out my channel because I have another video where I went into way more detail on this as well as talking about some of the differences between the old generation and the new generation. Next, the tent. This is a Slingfin Portal 2. I really like having the two-person tent for having that extra space to be able to get all of my gear inside the tent, whether it's you know places where there are bugs around or maybe there's bad weather. I just want to have all my stuff inside the tent. I actually had been using a trekking pole supported tent, a Z-Pax duplex for about five years. And I you know, just got tired of using poles. I found that I didn't really need them. And so last year was actually when I started using this tent. Um, I was searching for something that was super lightweight and bomber, and I landed on this. And I've been really happy with it so far. I've really only you know, modified it or changed or upgraded it in two ways. One is the, the poles that came with it. I, I bought some you know, thicker upgraded poles that Slingfin offers, as well as I've added uh, really long lines all around that allow me to attach it onto rocks or tree, tree limbs or other things in the area. These upgrades, the poles and the lines, enable me to camp in the sites where I want to be at, uh, which is typically, you know, sometimes above tree line and often very exposed. So I do use a ground sheet that gives me some added peace of mind in the places where I'm camping, where there's really bad terrain or maybe it's really rocky. I use the MSR Groundhog Minis. I generally will bring enough to be able to anchor the four corners, the head and the toe, and then one of you know one side for each of the doors. For these additional place, you know, the additional lines up here, I won't bring a stake for that necessarily because I generally expect to be able to find rocks or other heavy things in that area. So I only bring you know enough stakes for what I need. They're very strong. They hold in the ground really well and when the tent is pulling up on it on the line there it, these never come out however i try to actually find and use rocks when i'm camping really anywhere i find that when i attach those my lines onto rocks i just get a better hold you know in the event that the line does come off of a stake or it gets pulled out of the ground you lose all your holding power whereas with a rock you know, even if that rock starts to get pulled and sliding, you know, moving on the ground, it's still physically attached to the tent. Your tent is not going to blow away. Okay, moving on to sleep system. Starting with this item here, this is my quilt. It's an enlightened equipment, 20 degrees Fahrenheit. It probably would not be a 20 degree rating if you were to go and buy one on their website right now. I've been using this since 2017. This is maybe a 30F if you looked at the fill weights of what it was when I bought it compared to what they sell on the site right now. I really like this because for one, I can unzip it fully and I can just kind of wrap it around myself like a blanket. Uh, I can also zip up the ends. So, you know, attaching the two ends together and then creating essentially like a mummy bag. So it's very warm when I need it to be. It's also able to be just fully unzipped. So if you're camping in hot weather, you don't have to be, you know, kind of uh, sandwiched inside your bag. You can have a little bit more breathing room. 
I would highly recommend you consider using a quilt as opposed to a mummy bag. This has just been something that I really like and I would never really consider going back to a mummy bag. Okay, next item. This is a NeoWare Uber Light. This is the regular wide version. So it's got a little bit more width on it. I prefer to have, you know, the wide version because I actually tried the standard one and I found that when I was laying on it, that my arms and my hands would actually fall down to the ground. And that just had an uncomfortable, weird feeling. So I need to have my arms and, and you know, uh, forearms up onto the pad. So I'm laying there on my back more comfortably. This is the lightest NeoWare that they make. I, you know, have kind of actually probably replaced this at least once by now. And I actually carry a secondary pad. This is a Nemo switchback and it's the short version. So it's not the full length. I don't feel like the full length is necessary for one because I actually have this other pad. So this is really my redundancy solution. These Neo Air pads and I think most air pads have this flaw where over time, you know, they just start to develop these slow leaks. And so, you know, I find that when that happens, I wake up and I'm uncomfortable. And so by having this underneath my pad for one, you know, when that happens, I just don't feel it as much. Two, this adds a ton of warmth. And so having this underneath my pad instead of the air pad directly on the ground gives me added warmth. Now, lastly, you know, of course, as you could imagine, there's a ton of other times when I can use this when I stop for breaks or when I'm packing up or, you know, or um, like when you're getting just set up at the tent, I'll get this out right away and then I'll be sitting in the tent there on just this and I have, you know, padding underneath me. It's not uncomfortable, so I don't necessarily have to blow this up right away. Okay, last item within the sleep system. This is a Sea to Summit Eros pillow. It's the premium edition, which has kind of this really nice soft feel on your face when you're using it. I've had, you know, this style for now a couple of years. I really like it. It, you know, uh, fits underneath and keeps my head uh, off the ground. The one thing I'll say is that the durability of this particular uh, fabric on the face here is not that good. I've found that, you know, after just a couple of uses, the fabric starts to pile up. Now it doesn't necessarily affect the feel, you know, on my face. I don't necessarily feel that and it still works. However, I think that it just, it looks crummy at that point. And then I fear that over time, that's just gonna come off entirely. So I've been considering alternative pillows. If you're watching this video and you have a brand or type of pillow that you've been using and you really love it, drop it in the comments below. I think probably this will be something that I look to replace or upgrade sometime throughout this year. Okay, water purification. This is possibly one of the most, if not the most critical items in my pack. You might be wondering why am I holding two? Because I bring two with me on every trip. Uh, when I was hiking the John Muir Trail for the first time in 2017, I had a different style water purification system that had kind of a pump and that actually partially failed near the beginning of the trip and then kind of at the halfway point it fully failed and I was out in I think it was Silver Pass and it was broke and I was unsure if I could continue on my, with my trip and so I hiked 20 miles to Vermilion Valley Resort arrived there five minutes before they closed and kind of told my sob story to the woman working at the counter who ultimately offered to sell me her water filter and I was able to continue on with that that hike. So uh, I now ever since then always bring two water filters, you know, not two pump water filters. I've also transitioned away from those pump style water filters because of all the pieces and parts involved in that. With this Be Free, I basically go to the water source, I scoop it up, I screw on the cap and then I squeeze now you can imagine these bags they could pop or something could happen right um, and that's really why i have two is just in case one of them were to fail or maybe one was to get clogged i've got that redundancy solution so i'm covered now there are times when i go backpacking in places where i expect to be camped a little bit further away from water 
in those situations, I'll bring along a different kind of water bag system. Now these actually have a fitting where I can take the top off of this bag and put the be free water filter right in the top there. So it essentially turns it into a big water filter bag for a be free. And so I'll have, you know, kind of this setup. I also have one that's a, a two liter version of this so I can carry three liters of water to wherever my dry campsite is. That can also be handy again for when you're hiking and you have longer water carries, you can have kind of a dual system, if you will, where this is what you use all the time, all throughout the day, and then maybe you get this out when you really need to haul water away from that water source. Okay, on to cook system. This is the Pocket Rocket Deluxe. I've been a Pocket Rocket user for a long time. It was actually the first backpacking stove that I got. Uh, so I've been using this Pocket Rocket Deluxe and I actually got this little windscreen here. It's from a company called Flat Cat Gear. And what this does is it acts as a windscreen. And so when you're you know, putting it on top of your um, canister here, it doesn't do anything to cause heat to go back down into the canister. Some windscreens, you know, if you install or use them incorrectly, could actually force the heat back down into the canister, which could ultimately cause it to explode. So it's been properly designed as a windscreen. And what this does is it, you know, gives me better performance. So my water boils faster, I use less fuel. That enables me to go with smaller containers or smaller canisters. I use the smallest canister I can for a particular trip, and then I'm able to get roughly 30% more out of each canister. And I have, you know, uh, faster boil times to go along with that. This does have a piezo kind of click thing, so I can start it with that. However, I still do carry a lighter. Okay, you might be wondering about this thing on the bottom here. This is a canister holder, and this really just helps to keep my stove from falling over. As I said, I use a lot of those smaller canisters, and depending upon the tent site, you know, there might be uneven ground there. And so I just have these uh, legs on here that, you know, keep it from having uneven tip overs. And uh, it really doesn't weigh hardly anything, and it nests within my pot here, so it's not really a burden to bring along. This is a vault can. It's a titanium uh, one liter pot. And the thing I like about this is that it's one liter. Many of these are, you know, that are this style are smaller than that. And so if you fill up your typical water that you need for a backpacker meal, it might be at the very top of that. And so as it boils, it can, you know, spill water out or as you're handling it water can spill out so i generally am able to fill it up to that you know correct point and not have any spillage the other thing is you know i'm able to lift it off with these handles but having this bale on here i'm able to you know lift it up if ever there's times where these handles are hot or if there was a scenario where maybe my stove is not working correctly I could actually, you know, use a stick and hold this above a wood fire, or if I had it down in the coals, I could use a stick to lift it up and out of there with that bale on the top there. All right, what do I eat with? Long handle spoon. This is a TI wear from REI. I think I got this in 2009. I'm pretty sure this is the oldest piece of backpacking equipment that I own, and I probably will never ever need to replace this thing. Um, I use it with freezer bag meals, and so when I've got my Ziploc freezer bag, you know, it, and I'm eating out of it, I'm able to dig down deeper inside that bag and get out my food without getting kind of food and all, you know, all over my hands. The other thing is that I've got this uh, zero gravity gear. It's a koozie for your freezer bag meals, and you know, this just helps with keeping the food hotter longer. So as your food is rehydrating, it just rehydrates better, maybe a little bit faster. And then as you're eating it, it will stay warmer because it's protected inside here. This is super important and critical for in the winter time. And then lastly, this, this has like a dual purpose. When I'm uh, carrying a bear canister, 
I'll put this in the back of my pack, right, right behind my back there, between my back and the bear canister. And that just acts as another pad there in the event that the bat, you know, is pushing against my back, it's more comfortable. For food storage, I always bring a bear canister in those places where it's required. And a lot of the places I go, it is required and I absolutely adhere to those requirements. I've got three different bear canisters. This is the Bear Vault 450. I try to use this whenever possible because it's smaller and it fits in the pack nicer. The one thing about this versus the barricades is that it can be a little bit difficult to press these pads. So, you know, like it is right now when it's cold and I have to press this tab in here to slide this and get it open, that can make your fingers raw. So, you know, bring gloves if you can. The barricades, these are also very, very nice barrack canisters. They're lightweight. And as you can see, I've got the tall one here. Okay, I'm gonna move on to clothes and then I'll come back to the rest of the gear at the end. For hiking clothes and what I wear all the time, you know, during the day, starting with the hat, I use a 360 degree brim hat. This helps to keep the sun off my ears and on my neck and minimize the chances of getting sunburn. These don't work that well when it gets windy and so I'll always bring along an extra hat and I'll switch back and forth. For my top, I always wear a long sleeve hoodie. This is a really lightweight one. It's made out of a wool synthetic blend. I really like these style shirts and that type of wool synthetic blend helps to keep me cool when it's hot. And then when it's cold, it also keeps me warm. Typically we'll try to wear lighter colors. As you can see, uh, this helps with, you know, when it's hot and sunny, it just kind of keeps your body a little bit cooler with the hoodie on there, you know, when I'm wearing this and again, it's sunny or maybe it's windy and I'm not able to wear the 360 degree brim hat, I'm able to put up this hood and keep the sun off my head. For bottoms, I've been wearing these three quarter length dry fit leggings. I really like these because, you know, they keep everything in place and I don't get any chafing down there. Also because, you know, it covers the bottom part of my leg. I don't have to worry about, you know, sunscreen or getting sunburned. Also, when there's, you know, things that might be scraping up against my legs, I'm not going to get scraped up as much. And they just keep me a little bit warmer, which I like. I haven't noticed any issues with being hot from having wearing, wearing leggings. These are very thin, you know, and they do breathe very well. On top of those, I wear these smart wool shorts. They've got pockets on the front and one pocket on the back. I really like these because they have a really thick waistband. And so when they're, you know, being worn for a week or more at a time, they don't kind of fail or start to become weak and then slide down off my waist. They stay in place really well there. And because of that big wide waist belt, it feels comfortable when it's underneath the backpack waist belt. Okay, so for socks, I actually wear in GG toe socks. These are the synthetic version. I tried the wool ones, but they just felt a little odd. And so these are the synthetic version. And I wear these underneath my regular darn tough socks, the light hiker short version. I would have uh, sometimes get blisters in between my toes or on the end of my toes. It didn't really hurt, but I would notice those at the end of longer trips. And so ever since I've been wearing these, I don't really have those blisters on my toes ever at all. And then also on the heel area where I would sometimes get blisters previously, don't have any issues there. I previously would put Luco tape on my heel. And since I've been wearing these types of NGG toe socks with these socks over them, I've not had any issues. The other thing that I use are Dirty Girl Gators. I've used these now every year since 2018. When I did the John Muir Trail for the first time, I remember having to stop every couple of miles to literally stop and take my shoes off so I could drain all the sand and other little pebbles out. And so these are just a thing that you wear to keep crap from getting inside your shoes and all that stuff that you kick up when you're hiking. So for shoes, I've been wearing Ultra Lone Peaks now for several years. These are, I think, the Lone Peak 5s. They're not the latest ones that are out now. I basically just replace them once they've worn out to a certain point and then I get whatever is the latest version of the Lone Peaks. These ones have been, you know, used for last season and then the start of this season. And so it's likely that, you know, by the time summer rolls around, I'll need to get a new pair. 
Lastly, things that I wear, sunglasses, I'm typically wearing these, you know, all day long. And so having a good pair of comfortable sunglasses is hugely important to me. I want to keep, you know, my eyesight good and be comfortable while I'm hiking. These work really well. These are the Jelbo Glacier glasses. They let in only, I think, 5% of the visible light. You can still see out really well. And because they have this piece on the side, it just blocks all that light that's coming in from the side. I use this hard shell case and the cloth that came with it to protect it. And there's a carabiner here, which I use to attach this to the outside of my pack so I can easily put my sunglasses on and off throughout the day. Okay, so depending upon the conditions, these are the items that I would wear. Now, I've got a puffy. This is a custom made puffy from Goose Feet Gear. It's obviously custom fitted to me. It's an anorak style, which means that it's got a pocket here in the front and then a kind of uh, partial zipper there on the top. I don't ever hike in this. I only wear this when I'm stopped somewhere or I'm at camp. And because I have the quilt, I don't have that mummy up top. And so this helps to keep my upper body warm. This is a wind shirt from Patagonia. It's I think the Houdini version and I love this wind shirt. I wear this a ton and you know, it really gives me a lot of warmth. And so, you know, the other thing is I keep it on the outside of my pack in the upper part right here so I can throw it on real quick when I'm stopped. I also wear this when I'm in the tent and I'm just trying to stay a little bit warmer. I would say that in general, this adds at least 10 degrees warmth. And if you're in a place where it's really windy, this kind of thing is absolutely essential. Next item here, these are wind pants and they are from Mont Bell Gear. These ones are a bit beat up, as you can see, they've got kind of uh, some holes there. However, they still work just fine. And you know, you saw there, it just nests down next to nothing when it's inside the pack. This takes up really no space at all and weighs only a couple of ounces. So instead of carrying, you know, something like regular pants. This is what I put on when I need pants. I can wear that over my shorts and my leggings to be warm when I'm stopped somewhere during the day or when I'm at camp. I'll have on, you know, warmer long long underwear and I have these on under the uh, over that and it just keeps me nice and warm. Okay, this is a Z-Pax rain kilt. It looks kind of like a Cuban fiber sheet. It's basically got a zipper on, you know, uh, on this end and you would wrap it around you and you would zip it up. That can work better than using rain pants. If you're wearing rain pants, kind of like these, these wind pants, those can just trap all that moisture and heat from when you're hiking and can be really uncomfortable to hike in. So the idea with a rain kilt is that you have some freedom of motion and you don't get hot and sweaty down there while you're hiking in the rain. I'll tell you, I've only really used the kilt a handful of times, I would say 99.99% of the time. I'm using it sort of just like this ground sheet as a small ground sheet for when I'm at camp. And there are times when you know I need to put my pack somewhere where it's muddy and I can set it down on this. Also, there are times where maybe it's raining and I want to cover up my shoes, whether sitting outside of the tent or in places where I'm camped, it's also snowing. And so I can keep my stuff covered up out there. There's just a whole ton of uses for that and it takes up really nothing in my pack. So I always typically bring that along. Okay, this is a rain jacket from Outdoor Research. I sometimes actually just leave this at home and I typically am looking at the weather forecast right, by for, right before I start a hike and if it doesn't look like it's going to be a lot of rain, I leave this behind. I have other solutions and strategies for minimizing the effects of rain and so I find that I really only need this if I'm going to be going somewhere where I expect a lot of rain. All right, gloves for hiking. These are sun gloves. I typically will wear gloves to just protect my hands from the sun and also it keeps them from getting beat up when you're out in the wilderness. There's a lot of things that you're doing with your hands and so you can end up getting just nicked up and dinged up on your end of your hands. And so by wearing gloves all the time, you just help to protect the ends of your hands. These gloves work really well for you know the touch functionality. Some gloves don't work very well for the touch functionality. 
when I'm hiking in a place where I need to have trekking poles, these are not the ones I would use because these are a little bit too flimsy. I would use these outdoor research ones which have a leather inner part so as I'm gripping a trekking pole, it's not gonna just disintegrate quickly. The thing that I do not like about these particular gloves is that they do not have the e-touch version end and so every time I want to use my phone I have to take these off. Okay this is a buff, it's basically a neck gaiter, I wear that around my neck, sometimes I wear it up over my head or my ears. This is handy for you know hiking in when it's cold and just keeps your neck and raises your body temperature a little bit. It's also really good for when you're in hot or sorry dusty conditions and keeps the you know, stuff from blowing in your face. Headband, this works really well for when, you know, I'm hiking in places and it's cold and my ears get cold first, typically. I find, you know, my ears and my fingers are the first thing to get cold and I don't want to have to put on a hat that covers up my the rest of my head and makes my, you know, head feel hot. And so this works really well because it, as you can see, only covers up my ears I can also even wear a hat over it and hike in that. Also have a pack towel. This just goes on the front of my pack, helps with sweat or blowing your nose or whatever. Leather gloves. These I would say are, are not necessarily something that I wear too often. You know, I can wear them when if it's really cold or something like that. These are just super warm anyways. But how I use these is when I need to handle things at camp, picking up rocks and setting up my tent or you know, handling the stakes that go in and out of the ground. I find that if I don't bring these along, my hands at the end of that trip, they're just destroyed, the, the ends of my fingers. Or worst case, I get a cut you know, and I'm bleeding and having to deal with all of that while I'm out there. And so this is something that I didn't always carry, but lately, the last two years, I've just been bringing these on every single trip. These are ones from Marmot, and they have kind of a soft inner feel, but I think really maybe any leather glove will work just fine. All right, last thing that I wear sometimes, these are water socks. They're neoprene it's water socks. They keep my feet warm when I'm going through water. And I used to carry camp shoes, some uh, rubber kind of croc style camp shoes and use those to walk through water. However, what I found was that with snow melt and even having to cross water in the winter time, the water is just so freezing cold that it's actually painful to walk through. And if you're finding that it's painful to walk through, you may go too quickly. You might slip and fall because you're not going slow and steady. And so by having these water socks on, I'm able to walk through the water really comfortably, nice, slow, and steady. I don't you know, feel rushed as I'm going through the water, and it's because of these. All right, so for sleep clothes, I have dedicated sleep clothes. You know, that's because at, you know, when you're hiking during the day, your clothes are hot, sweaty, and dirty. And when I get to camp, generally I wanna get out of those clothes and start to dry them out, or sometimes I'll even wash and rinse them and hang them to dry. And so I need other clothes and I need clothes that will keep me warm at night. I wear long underwear, wool underwear, and I wear a long sleeve wool shirt. Around my neck, I have another gaiter. This is another wool one. It's a little bit looser fitting than the blue one. So as I wear that around my face and neck, it doesn't feel constricting. I also have this balaclava when I'm wearing that, just this part of my face is showing, helps to keep my head, neck, and, war and area warmer. And then lastly, on top of that, I have just a knit wool hat. I also bring wool liner gloves. These are great. Uh, they keep my fingers warm. They have little touch uh, pads on them, so I can use these in the tent to touch on my phone and not have to take gloves off to handle my phone. I also have dedicated sleep socks. Usually, you know, they'll look something like this, maybe with the longer um, ankle area. These still can be worn for hiking. And then sometimes when my other socks are just really dirty for a long trip, you know, if the last day I don't need sleep socks anymore, I will wear these to hike out in. And then also to keep my feet warm, I typically will bring down socks. These are similar kind of in nature to a sleeping bag except they're just like little sleeping bags for your feet and they keep my toes toasty warm 
And you know, there's times where in, you know, everything's inside my sleeping bag and my toes would just still be cold. Ever since I've been using these down socks, you know, I never have this problem of cold toes when I'm out in the back country. All right, let's get on to the rest of the gear, starting with camera. Now, this is just one of the cameras that I have. This is the smallest one that I have or use when backpacking. This would be something that I would use if I was going on a really fast and light trip or something where maybe I didn't necessarily expect to take a ton of pictures. However, in any case, I always want to have a dedicated camera because it just takes much better pictures than my cell phone. The other cameras that I use are a full frame camera. So it's sort of larger and it has a lens on it. I put that on my pack right here. I talk about it a little bit more in my pack video if you're interested in that. So unfortunately I can't show you that because I'm using that camera right now to make this video. One of the other things that I use when I'm you know, taking photos or videos is a real tripod. This is great because it enables me to get you know, really solid shots. I, I also do night sky photography and for getting those star shots and not having you know, uh, streaks or things like that, this is essential. This is a carbon fiber tripod. It weighs one pound. It also has the little ball thing up there so I can easily get the shots that I want. I also have the Insta360. I just got this. So this is gonna be something that I use starting this year. And I'm really excited about this because it enables me to get shots that I otherwise can't get using just regular cameras. Another thing that I have for cameras is this uh, clip here that enables me to put my phone on the tripod. This is a super durable one. It's got a screw type closure system here. So when it's in there, it's really gonna be locked in. This is handy not only for you know, taking photos and videos with my phone, but also when I'm in the tent at night and I wanna be able to maybe watch videos on my phone, I'll put my phone on here on the tripod and then I can watch videos and have the tripod move to different spots and get good angles so that I'm not you know, looking all crazy trying to watch in the, in the tent at night. Okay, phone. I always bring a phone with me when I'm going backpacking for obvious reasons. Uh, this is Samsung Galaxy S23 Plus. I put maps on here, topo maps, satellite maps to use to help with, you know, navigation or trip planning while I'm out in the wild and I maybe need to change my plan. This is really handy to have those maps on there to be able to you know, drill in and do all that. Another piece of critical gear for me, this is the Garmin InReach Mini. This is a satellite communicator. I'm able to use it in a couple of different ways. I pair it to my phone and that enables me to use the app on my phone to send SMS or email messages to family. They can communicate with me. I can give them updates on how the trip is going. If there's any critical questions, I can answer those. So I get that two-way communication. I also have this set up in the tracking mode. So as I'm hiking around, it's sending a ping every 10 minutes. That then goes out to a website. I use this site called Spotwalla where it pulls that information in and then it creates these trip specific map views, which I share with family and they can go in and look and see exactly where I'm at and watch where my little breadcrumb is at moving across there. Lastly, it's got this SOS button. I hope I never need to use that, but honestly, that's what makes this the most priceless piece of electronics that you could have out in the backcountry. If you actually had a true emergency and you were in a life or death situation, you're gonna press that button, which will alert somebody in a room somewhere that's going to call all of the necessary resources out to rescue you or help you. Typically keep that on the outside of my pack and I have that in the tracking mode anytime I'm moving around. When I'm at camp at night, I turn off the tracking mode and then I just use it to communicate with. The other thing that this also does is it enables me to get weather reports. Now they're not the greatest weather reports, but it's a weather report that I don't have otherwise, and I use that to help me to understand what the weather's gonna be for the next days and you know onward. Okay, another piece of electronics that I have, this is the Garmin Fenix 5X. It's a fitness watch from Garmin. It has GPS functionality, so you can kind of track where you're at on a map built in. It has the ability to navigate right there on the screen. That's sort of helpful sometimes so that I don't have to pull out my phone to be able to look at maps. The one thing that I really like about this that I use all the time when I'm hiking in the mountains is the altimeter. 
as you're going up and down, typically it's not the distance that you're worried about, it's the altitude that you need to go up to get over that mountain pass. And so I'm always looking at the altitude as I'm going up and thinking about how many vertical feet I have to go to get over that mountain pass. Okay, lighting, I've got a headlamp. This is a black diamond, it's a rechargeable. That's really, I think, absolutely critical for when you're in the backcountry. If this thing gets turned on in my pack accidentally, I can recharge it when I'm out there in the field and not have to bring extra batteries along. This unit is probably five or six years old. It still works great, so I'm not gonna replace it. The other lighting that I bring along with me is just a little tent light, and this has different colors. I hang this in the tent, and this just helps to cast light around the, diff you know, the, the tent so I can see better inside the tent at night. This is also rechargeable. Okay, in terms of power, when I'm out in the backcountry, I always bring a USB battery. This is a 20,000 milliamp battery. I like this one because the size, as you can see, it's kind of you know long and thin, it fits in the pack pretty well. It also has two ports, which is really nice because sometimes when you're trying to charge, you need to charge multiple things and you only have a short amount of charge, charging time to get that done in. The other charging solution that I have is this solar panel from SunTastics. It's got a USB port there. It's really kind of low power. It gives you, I think, five watts output, which really isn't enough to be able to charge like a full-size camera or certain other electronics. However, it works great for charging things like smartwatches, the Garmin inReach, the different lighting. So I use that to effectively complement my USB battery and it really enable me to carry less of these USB batteries. It also charges my phone. And so when I'm stopped, typically I'll pull this out of the side top compartment on my pack and I'll have the cable there so I can just charge my phone when I'm stopped for lunch or whatever that is. I also bring, you know, a contingent of USB cables. I need a specific one for the watch, unfortunately, so that's just to, just for the watch. Micro USB cables, USB-C, which... Okay, another thing that I have here, it's an air pump. You might be wondering, why do I carry an air pump? Because when I get out to my campsite and I'm at high altitude, I'm often tired, sometimes I'm winded. The last thing I want to do is crawl into my tent and be blowing up an air pad. And so I can attach this to the little valve on the air pad and then, you know, just let it do its thing while I sit in, you know, and do other things. This really weighs almost next to nothing. And I find that just not having to blow up the air pad is huge, huge advantage of having this. It runs on batteries, so it's not rechargeable, but these batteries will last me at least one season. I've actually never had a time when I was out in the field and the batteries ran out. I've also got dry bags, as you can imagine. You know, this one for electronics. Everything that I have electronics wise fits into there and I am able to roll up these bag tops. I also have other dry bags for other things like this is where I keep the camera cleaning equipment, my little alcohol pads for keeping my camera clean. There are also dry bags for my quilt and a few of the other things. Okay, first aid kit, band-aids, triple antibiotics, some rubber gloves. I also have in there some little tenacious tape patches. Other things in my toiletry kit, I have moisturizer and multiple chapsticks. I've had times where I've been on a backpacking trip and I had one chapstick and I lost it. And you know, you end up with that really super dry chap lips and I hate that. So I always have two chapsticks. One I typically keep on the outer part of my shoulder pouch where I can get to it any time. And then one I keep inside my pack, inside my toiletry kit here. So in the event I lose this one, I'm good. The other thing is I have two lighters. I have two lighters because you know, that's really important to be able to boil water when I'm out there or maybe in a life or death emergency, I might need to make a fire. So I keep one lighter inside my toiletry kit and then I keep another one with my stove. Okay, last thing in here is my little Victorionix knife. It has a small blade, it's got a nail file, it's got a little scissors. I've never found the need for anything larger than that. Okay, another thing I keep in my kit is this Z-Line. It's the thin version of the Z-Line. This is approximately 25 feet. I use this to string between trees to be able to hang stuff on, dry it out. It also could come in handy in the event I need to 
hang something off of a tree, maybe your shoelace broke or whatever, or maybe the lines on your tent have, have, have failed. There's just a ton of stuff where you can use this. Okay, other stuff in my pack here, I've got wet wipes, hand sanitizer. I usually find that this is about right for maybe a three or four day trip. If I'm gonna be on something longer than that, then maybe I might bring two of these. Got a little toothbrush and toothpaste, sunscreen. This is SPF 50. I wouldn't recommend going with anything lower than SPF 50. Most of my body and my clothes, you know, my skin is typically covered up. So often I'm only putting this on my face. Bug spray. I hate bugs. The one thing I hate the most is ticks of all things out in the wild places. It's not bears, it's not snakes, spiders, other stuff. I just absolutely hate ticks more than anything. So when I'm going to places where there's risk of ticks, I absolutely have bug spray. When I'm going places with flying bugs, I bring this head net. You know, you gotta have that, put it on over your head, keeps you sane while you're moving through bug country. Another thing you gotta have is the deuce of spades. Use this for digging a hole and going to the bathroom. Must have item is Ziploc bags. I use this small sandwich style bag to keep all the snack trash throughout the day. And then I always carry at least three or so of the gallon size Ziploc bags. Don't buy the slider ones, buy the standard top closure. The slider ones will fail. That little slider piece will come off. I also will bring along a Z-Packs bear bag to hold my trash inside there. And so, you know, when I'm packing out my toilet paper and my other trash, I have that inside one of these and these to be able to keep all the smell and stuff inside so it doesn't get out. Okay, one of the other items that I bring with me that I keep on my pack at all times, this is an emergency whistle. <laughs> This is, you know, something that I've never had to use or needed to use. However, in the event that I, you know, fall or something happens to me while I'm hiking, this is something that could save my life and it weighs really next to nothing. And so by keeping it on my pack where I can get to it, if something were to happen, I would be able to get somebody's attention. The other thing here is this is a thermometer and compass. Of course, the compass helps me to navigate if all of my other means of navigation weren't working but the thermometer is really handy so I can be able to tell what the temperature is just for informational reasons. Last piece of gear that I typically always bring with me on a trip, this is a umbrella. It's got a silver kind of reflectiveness to it. So when the sun is hitting that and then on the inside there's a black coating, none of the sun gets through. So this is really primarily speaking for sun protection. However, it obviously works for rain. Now. Because I have mentioned before, I don't always bring my rain jacket because I have this. And a lot of times when it rains, it's just for a short period of time. Putting on your rain jacket is just overkill. And you know, in the Sierra, I'm able to just, you know, when it's doing the Sierra rain for 15 minutes, I'm able to throw this on and then hike around comfortably. Last thing is when you're wearing a rain jacket, you know, uh, compared to this, if, if it was, raining, I could hold this above my, you know, pack. So it could also protect some of my pack as it's raining. And when I'm hiking, holding this versus wearing a rain jacket, you know, this is much cooler. So the air is able to cross over my body. I don't get hot and sweaty. So it's just is really important item to have. I think the other thing is I've got little strings here that I'm able to attach this onto my pack so I can actually hike with this on. I don't, generally always do that. I've done that in Joshua Tree and a few other places. However, I find it's just a lot easier to just hold it in your hand when you need it. All right, so that's everything that I would bring with me on a typical trip. Now, this year is a little bit different. Over this past winter, we had nine atmospheric rivers in California. So the snowpack in the Sierra is just absolutely huge right now. So early season hiking, I think I'm gonna need to bring a few additional items. These are micro spikes. These are from Cthulhu. I've had these for a really long time. They go on over my shoes. And, you know, these enable me to not slip when I'm going over slippery terrain, snow and ice. They don't really work that well when you get to like warm, slushy snow. And so you have to take them off if you get to those sorts of conditions. These are really 
important, I think, to have, especially when you're going over mountain passes. Another thing which I may or may not use during this backpacking season is trekking poles. Now, I told you before, I don't really like to use trekking poles. I still have trekking poles. I think if I need to bring one because of the snowpack for this year, I'll only bring one. So I'll be able to have just that added balance if you know I'm you know falling through the snow in certain places. I don't think I necessarily need to have both. And by having only one, I can more easily get to things like my camera or whatever and have one hand free. Another thing that I may be using is an ice axe. I haven't really used this. I bought this two years ago and I just haven't had a chance to use it yet. This, this year may be the year to use it. Okay, one last thing that I bring with me, I'll bring a map. I usually try to buy these National Geographic Trails Illustrated maps because they're really durable, they're waterproof, lasts a long time. As I mentioned, I have typically got the maps on my phone. However, you know, that's just gonna consume battery. And sometimes I wanna look at the map for a really long time and think about where I'm going and what I'm doing. So having something that doesn't consume battery is, I think, important. Okay, that's it. This is all the gear that I'll be using throughout the 2023 season. Hope you enjoyed this video and that you got some use out of it. I'm curious if you use any of these items. Do you love them? Do you hate them? Do you have any other items that you use for backpacking that you just absolutely love? I really want to hear about it. Tell me about it in the comment section below. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more outdoor gear and adventure videos. Thanks.